I've been speedrunning Zelda games for over a decade at this point, and in this time, I've completed an any percent run of every single mainline 3D Zelda game. That was up until the release of Tears of the Kingdom last year. After playing it casually for the first time at its release, I completely wrote off any chance of me ever speedrunning this game. There's so many unskippable cutscenes. Can you skip these? Oh my god, the speedrun's gonna be ass. At the time, I figured the intro is super long, the first area, the Great Sky Island, seems incredibly long, uninteresting, boring, and the fact that almost every glitch from Breath of the Wild being patched removed much hope of the any percent run being interesting. And to my credit, at launch, I was fairly correct. The intro sequence was essentially an auto-scroller with a 5 minute unskippable cutscene at the end. The patch glitches meant that there was no whistle sprinting, no wind bombing, no BLSS, and pretty lame movement outside of riding on wings. So Tears of the Kingdom was off to a pretty rough start, and a lot of runners who picked up the game at this time did not last very long. But it's been a year since Tears of the Kingdom released, and the current any percent speedrun is near indistinguishable from the one I just described. Recently, the current any percent speedrun really caught my eye, so I decided to challenge myself. I gave myself one week to learn the entire speedrun, and attempt to finish an any percent speedrun in under one hour, which would place me in the top 100 of the speedrun leaderboards. And it would once again leave me with a completed any percent speedrun for every single 3D Zelda game. I livestreamed the entirety of this challenge on my Twitch channel, which you should check out if you want to see some Tears of the Kingdom speedruns. Who knows, I might be doing some attempts right now. The first thing you'll probably notice is that I do runs with the save after the intro, which is actually allowed under the leaderboard rules. However, this prevents me from performing intro clip, a trick in the introduction sequence of the game that skips the dialogue sequences from Zelda, saving a minute in the any percent speedrun. I decided to do this in order to gain confidence with the main portion of the run, which hopefully would help me with my goal time in the first week. On the first day of the challenge, I spent over 6 hours on the first two tricks of the run. The first one is Cog Skip. After waking up in the Room of Awakening, we can use the slope property of the cog to get an abnormally high speed jump, which when combined with the jump slash, can be used to get onto the higher ledge in this room. This allows us to get on top of the Room of Awakening Island and get the wings chest early. Then, after going into the menu and holding the wings, I can sort and close the menu at the same time, which will duplicate the wings. After diving off the island into the title card cutscene, our goal in the game is now to reach and activate the Temple of Time, which activates the shrines across the Great Sky Island. We want to do the Ascend Shrine first, and the fastest way to get there is from the island with the Room of Awakening, where we just were. But typically, we can't go back there until we unlock fast traveling, which again, typically doesn't happen until we've completed three shrines. However, if we can activate the Temple of Time without touching the ground, Voiding Out will respawn us back on the island from before we dived into the cutscene. This is easier said than done. After diving off the island into the title card cutscene, we have to do one of the most challenging tricks in the run, Wing Flip. By pulling a wing mid-dive, we can flip the wing, and by grabbing the wing while it's fully vertical, we perform a fall damage cancel, allowing us to spawn and jump slash onto another wing. We can ride and stay on this wing to grab the Pura Pad, then fly in another wing directly to the Temple of Time. Along the way, we can crash into this construct, letting us collect a shield and a sword. Then, we can place wings to build a bridge to the entrance, allowing us to activate the Temple of Time and the shrines. We can then void out and respawn back above the Room of Awakening. From here, I can fly in another wing and perform another fall damage cancel off of the shrine, which allows me to do the Ascend Shrine first. This is by far the easiest shrine out of the four, and is completed relatively casually, just making sure to grab the bow from this construct. After the shrine, we can fall damage cancel to the bottomless cave. Then we can grab a shield, a bomb flower, and then fly towards the construct who will give us the energy cell. Here, we can do more bombs in a similar fashion to the wings, and then enter the pond side cave to grab a ruby that will come in handy later. Now, we can fly in another wing and ascend up in front of the fuse shrine. This shrine is where things start to get interesting. We can bomb jump onto this ledge, grab a second bow and a small key, and then we can break this game wide open with Tears of the Kingdom's newest glitch, Quick Drop Smuggle. After unlocking the door, we can do some precise menuing to drop a glitch bow on the ground. When we pick this glitch bow back up, it'll get stuck to our feet. This glitch state will have some strange properties, and allows us to cancel a jump slash. By doing this multiple times in a row, we're able to gain height and hover. In combination with speed using a bomb fuse shield, we can travel very quickly over long distances. 
This glitch, known as Arrow Smuggle Flight, is now our primary method of movement throughout the run. This was by far the hardest glitch for me to learn in the run. The rhythm required for Arrow Smuggle Flight is a bit tricky, and doing it incorrectly causes you to do a jump slash, which will kill your Arrow Flight. Getting this glitch down took the entirety of day 2 and 3, but by day 4 I was fully consistent at the hardest and longest Arrow Smuggle Flight from the Fuse Shrine to the Ultra Hand Shrine. Thanks to this, I was able to learn the Arrow Flight in Ultra Hand, the Arrow Flight to Temple of Time, the Arrow Flight inside the Recall Shrine, and was able to finish off the entirety of Great Sky Island on day 4. From here, we're finally in the end game of the run, and can fly on another wing all the way to a balcony in Hyrule Castle. On this flight, we want to dupe a bunch of rubies, and use Arrow Flight to fall damage cancel onto the balcony. This balcony is very special because it's positioned almost directly above the army boss fight. To get down there, we have to grab an arrow refill on the balcony and perform another glitch, known as a jump slash cancel clip through the roof. This allows us to dive all the way out of bounds into the army fight. You might have noticed one slight problem though. Coming up, we have the army fight, the boss rush, Ganondorf, and the demon dragon boss fight, but our only weapon is a rusty sword. Well, if you remember from earlier, we duped a bunch of rubies on our flight here. One special property of rubies when they're thrown is that they explode, doing a high area of effect damage. Using this property, the army boss fight becomes a breeze, allowing us to collect two fused materials and two royal halberds. And for the boss rush portion, we can perform another jump slash cancel clip to skip it in its entirety. Along the way, we can perform another glitch known as Zuggle which allows us to hold four royal halberds at once, which when fused to a material we picked up earlier, allows us to beat each phase of Ganondorf in only a single flurry rush. This leads us to the final and hardest boss of the game, the Demon Dragon. In a casual playthrough, this fight is a glorified auto-scroller, where you hit all four eyes on the Demon Dragon's back and then the crystal on its head. However, in a speedrun, we want to defeat the Demon Dragon in just two cycles, and to make matters worse, we don't have a paraglider. To do this, we can chain jump slashes to land at the first eye, spawn a wing to head to the second eye, use our other material to the master sword, then defeat the second eye. If this was done fast enough, we can dive down onto the dragon, who will take us directly to the third eye. From here, we can fly to the fourth, allowing us to once again dive onto Zelda and perform the final damage to the demon dragon. After grabbing Zelda's hand, we've officially completed the game. After learning all of this at the end of day 5, I began the journey for sub 1.
After only five days of the challenge, I was already six minutes away from my goal. On day six though, I started to get a little bit worried. I was getting multiple runs that were easily on pace for my sub one goal time. However, I couldn't get a single one of them past the army fight. I'm not sword anymore, I dropped it. I was starting to lose just a little bit of hope. I only had one more day to get the run that I wanted. But thankfully, on day seven, the final day of the challenge, I got exactly what I was looking for. You cycle or you one follow? I trust. Easy. Easy. Fifty eight oh five. Nice. Sub one, baby. That's what's up. I fucking lost like five minutes on army. <laughs> oh my god. So I did it. In only seven days, I learned the entirety of the Tears of the Kingdom speedrun and got top one hundred on the leaderboards. I cannot overstate how genuinely difficult this was for me. Tears of the Kingdom Any% percent is not only one of the coolest, but also one of the hardest speedruns I've ever done. But I'm glad I did it, and I'm excited to see where I'll go in this game moving forward. Until then though, thanks for watching. I tried a bit of a different editing style for this video, so hopefully you still enjoyed. If you did, consider subscribing. I'm looking forward to potentially making more videos about this game. Until then though, consider clicking on one of the videos on screen now. Goodbye.